talk about the DevOps Pro exam. So I, again, did this like I did for the AZ400, which is the Azure's DevOps expert exam. I went without any prep. I had AWS Community Builders voucher, so I was giving this exam for free. Otherwise, it cost around $300. So that coupon, I got it last year, and it was expiring on 31st of March. But the DevOps Pro exam has retired on 6th of March. So 6th of March was the last day I could take the first version and then came with a new version, which is C002. That's why I booked the exam on 6th of March. And I'm like, let's just wing it exactly like I did for the AC400. Being said that, I do have one year of DevOps engineer experience. The tooling that I used was TeamCity, Terraform, and Azure DevOps. So I was not so familiar with the AWS side of tooling. So, you know, code commit, code pipeline, code build, and there's a whole fleet of DevOps tools that are available from AWS. So I did know what each of them did, and I was clear with the DevOps principles and, you know, where these tools come in. That being said, I haven't taken any course or didn't even go through the FAQs. I don't recommend doing that, but for me, you know, I had a coupon expiring. I had this exam version retiring. So I said, you know, why not? Let's, let's go and see if I fail or pass. Talking about my experience of the exam, I took it in person, so I didn't do the remote version. I have a college two blocks down my apartment, so it's really easy uh, for me to just show up there whenever I have my appointment for the exam. I don't have to, you know, unplug monitors and make sure the environment is good uh, if I'm doing it remotely via Pearson View. So I booked the exam, went there to the exam center, and this was the first exam that I took almost two and a half hours out of the three hours. So I took majority of the time. And also, I think after question 30, 35, I, it was really hard for me to focus because like, I had a bad headache. And I think that was because of the lack of breakfast. I didn't do any breakfast and just went for the exam. Also, the questions were, I felt like they were compared to the Azure DevOps Pro or DevOps Expert, they were a bit lengthy. So you have to remember the context of the question and also like the options were you know, too wordy is what I'm trying to say. So that meant a lot of reading and keeping in mind. So I think that caused the headache along with being, you know, empty stomach. So nevertheless, I passed the exam. I scored 756. Uh, I can show the results somewhere here. Uh, and yeah, I think I feel pretty good about it because when I clicked finish exam, uh, the result didn't pop up. So they were going to email me. I don't know if it's true for all the professional level certificates for AWS, because for the associate ones, you definitely get a pass or fail right as you finish. And then you get a detailed report within 48 hours. Whereas for this, I, I didn't even know if I passed or failed as soon as I ended the exam, but I ex was expecting to fail this one. Some of the questions I was really confused. So I guess I just went with my gut, you know, picking services that made sense to me. But yeah, I would say do prepare for this exam. As for the questions, I would say, you know, familiarize yourself with all of the DevOps tools that AWS offers. So code commit, code build, code deploy, code pipeline, right? And then also any of the configuration management and IC. So CloudFormation, Elastic Beanstalk, SSM, OpsWork, so familiarize yourself with these services. There were a lot of questions about these. The other ones that I saw were CloudTrail, uh, CloudWatch, uh, Logs and Monitoring, right? Also AWS Config and Inspector. So I think these are the ones that I can remember, like I saw many questions about. And I think if you are really good with these services and you know the use cases and have practical experience with them, I think you will be fine. Uh, for the exam questions. Also understand the concepts deeply about fault tolerance, disaster recovery, and high availability. Uh, there were questions, or these were also part of the questions which would ask you on a certain service, but you have to focus on like high availability or fault tolerance. Make sure you understand that. And also I think if you know SDLC, which is software development lifecycle really good, and you have worked with within a DevOps team or cloud team where you focused on SDLC, I think you will be fine. 
And as for the resources, since I didn't use any, but I do have some recommendations, I think. For any of the AWS courses or AWS certificate courses, I've gone with Stefan Marek's courses. They're great. So you can find his courses on Udemy. And for any of the practice exams, if you do want to take those, I think Tutorial Dojo or John Bonso's uh, practice exams are great. I took that for Solutions Architect, the, the same combo. And then I think that's the last course and practice exam that I took for any of the certifications. But yeah, those are the resources I would recommend. I wanted to do both of these, the AZ400 and AWS DevOps Pro last year, but I couldn't. And this year too, I didn't, you know, had the time to prepare, but I do have the certificates now, so, you know, always keep in mind that hands-on experience is always going to be better than, you know, courses or exam dumps or practice questions. So, yeah, that's the video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.